Hello everyone. Today we're going to show how to set up a cluster on EC2 running Dask Distributed and Anaconda uh, using an easy setup script DEC2. If you have AWS credentials, you should be able to follow along and have something up and running in 10 minutes. Uh, only about one, one minute of s requires your actual attention. So first we're going to install this DEC2 command. DEC2 is a quick and simple salt application that sets up uh, machines on EC2 using our AWS credentials and then launches uh, Dask distributed workers on those machines. So we're just in this DEC2 up command and you can see it takes uh, authentication from, DEC, from AWS as well as a variety of configuration options for the cluster and for Dask. So we're going to set things up with my credentials This is all that's actually necessary to set, set, set things up. There's the same defaults, but we're going to add a couple of extra keyword arguments like count. I want to specify I want to use nine different nodes on EC2. I'm going to use one for my scheduler and eight for different workers. And then also I want to run with processes and not threads on my workers. So I'm going to pass through a keyword argument to send to the workers, uh, this nprox keyword argument. And that's it. Um, that will take around five to 10 minutes, depending on your machine and on EC2. So we're going to pause the video here and come back in a moment. Okay, so DEC2 has finished. It's given us nice instructions here on how to connect to our, our Dask cluster uh, using the terminal. So we're going to just copy paste these four lines. First, we're going to SSH into the head node using the DC2 SSH command. Then while on the head node, we're going to run IPython shell then, once we're in IPython, we're going to open up Dask Distributed and connect to a local client. Uh, so we're going to start a local client that's connecting to a scheduler on the same node. So there's a scheduler on the head node of the cluster, and there are eight workers spread throughout the rest of the cluster. So we're just going to copy-paste this in. We're going to SSH in, start up an IPython shell, launch Dask Distributed, and connect to the local scheduler. Now we have this executor object, and this is our basic client. Uh, and it looks like actually one of the one of the workers failed to start up. Looks like we only have seven workers, each of eight processes, but that's okay. Uh, so we can use the S3 module from distributed. Notice here we imported S3 to grab the read CSV function, uh, which looks exactly like pandas read CSV, except that it takes an S3 bucket and key. So there's a Dask data bucket with just this one fun data set in it, the NYC taxi data set which is a data set I've played with different blog posts before. We're not going to do too much here except for set it up. Uh, and if you're interested in how to play with it, I recommend looking at the other screencasts and blog posts that have been set up recently. So we'll look at the 2015 data. And we want this to start off uh, loading in immediately. So we're going to use lazy equals false keyword argument. So this gives us back a Dask data frame, which coordinates many small pandas data frames that are currently being loaded up across our cluster. Let's go look at how, long, how that's doing. Uh, so that started immediately, and then we get started 14% through. And so this is loading up pandas data frames throughout our cluster uh, that are all loading from CSV data held in S3. Uh, I was going to take a little bit, so I'm going to pause the recording and come back. So just to recap, a Dask data frame looks very much like a pandas data frame. We can see the columns that are present or the data types. Um, but it engages many small pandas data frames throughout the cluster to actually do all of the work. So if we call head, we talk to one small pandas data frame, just the first one get the head of that data frame. We can do operations that span the whole data set, like asking for the passenger count, sum, and these all return fairly speedily in sort of sub-second times, despite the fact that this data frame is spread across a cluster and has around 60 gigabytes in RAM. I'm actually not going to go f too much further into this. If you're interested in playing with this data set, I recommend playing with it uh, or looking at previous blog posts. The point of this screencast was to show that with a few lines, you could go from nothing at all to launching your EC2 cluster and to playing with a distributed data frame from CSV data in S3. So I'm going to quit this now, and I recommend people to play with this, and we're going to log out of this. And I just want to point out that when DC2 started up, uh, it also provided for you a clusters file, which shows all of the uh, IP addresses of all the machines that we've started for you. 
So if you want to, you can log into these machines manually and play with them. Uh, additionally, if you want to destroy things, you can clean up the cluster and stop paying money with this DEC2 to destroy command. Okay, that's it. I want to point people to the uh, DEC2 web page, just a Dask, just a GitHub page, and this had the Dask organization. And also, most of this work was done by Daniel Rodriguez, who usually works on a project, a proprietary project called Anaconda Cluster, which does provisioning and cluster management uh, in a proprietary sense. It's like DEC2, but much more. And so if you're interested in this topic in general, you might want to check that out. Okay, that's it. Thank you all for your time.